In this video to show how to repair uh, subfloor, it's plywood subfloor or wood subflooring. Um, doing this before you put in carpet, laminate, hardwood, anything like that. This section I've already repaired and right in this area here, the subfloor along this seam was actually dropping because the floor joist, the wood they used, uh, wasn't a nice square piece. It actually, on this edge here, it was kind of split. So in this whole spot here, when you walked on it, the subfloor would actually drop. Now, with all the carpet and everything up, this is the time to get any repairs done. So what you do is you cut out the section of subfloor and pop it up, box it in with two by fours, put the subfloor black back on or a new piece of plywood if the other subfloor is damaged and then screw it all back down. Now, that one's done, so you can see what it looked like. Over here, I actually need to do some repairs because right here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually cracked. The subfloor is actually cracked. And what's happening is if you put any weight on it, it actually, it, I can feel it soft. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but it's almost spongy feeling. You can see there's a high spot here. So this is where the floor joist is going. Another floor joist is over here. So right over here, not quite in the center, but it's split and there's this weak spot all the way down. I don't want to spend all the time getting all the floor ready and then spending the money on laminate just to have a soft spot or even worse, have that section of subfloor fail. Uh, in this area, we're gonna be putting a dining room table. So some weight will be on there, lots of foot traffic. Don't want any issues. So what I'm gonna do is I'll be cutting it out, boxing it in with two by fours, and then um, put in some new plywood on top. Now is I have used a two by four to mark about the width of a two by four. So where the, the nails are in the subfloor right now. So you don't wanna obviously cut right along where the nails are. One, you're gonna damage your saw by cutting through the metal. Also, what, you, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut just off of the joist and then I'm gonna put a two by four against the joist and that's where my new subfloor is gonna rest against. So it makes it even stronger actually. So what I did was I used the width of the two by four along where about the center of the nails are already and marked it. You can mark it with a pencil. I marked it with a pencil and used a chalk line and this will help me when, when I'm using the saw obviously to cut straight. And I'm actually just gonna cut slightly off of this line because I don't wanna cut into those joists at all. So what I'll do is I'm gonna use the circular saw and I'm going to cut along these lines and that should be as easy as just popping that uh, piece of plywood up. jigsaw or chip can saw or whatever you want to call it, um, just to get closer to these edges. The circular saw is going to kind of cut, finish cutting at an angle, 
So because this is a nice straight blade, I'm able to cut this right up without having to really cut into the other boards, other sub four pieces. So, so. Okay, so I've got this uh, piece of the subfloor off. Um, I, uh, my wife was recording and for some reason the recording stopped. So basically, I uh, popped off the subfloor here. Just used like a pry bar, something like that. Um, it was on here and if you get a pry bar in the center, start prying it up, the whole board will kind of flex and it'll pop out of the uh, grooves, right? Because these have like tongue and groove construction so that it kind of locks in. So basically pull it in from the center, pop, it'll just pop right out. Now, this is uh, what's underneath the floor. Um, basically when you're using your circular saw to cut out the subfloor, you want to make sure you set the depth. This is the saw at full, uh, like basically full depth and that's pretty deep. I didn't have it set at that. I had it, uh, let's see if I can quickly show you. I had it set about there, just to show you about that. So you want it only maybe an inch for depth when you're cutting through the subfloor, not four inches. Reason is, underneath the floor, you don't really know what's there. There's this metal barrier here. We also got piping for the sprinkler system for downstairs and then there's a beam going across. You don't want to be cutting really deep into the beams, you don't want to be cutting too deep and hitting your sprinkler line, and you don't want to be cutting through anything else like barriers or wiring and stuff like that. So it's really, really important to set your depth correctly and basically try to do as minimal of a cut as possible. If you cut through once and you realize you're just not deep enough, that's okay, set your saw, cut it again. It's better to do that twice than go too deep and then hit something and cause huge damage or basically big headaches for yourself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, some two by fours, I'm gonna box all of this in and uh, that way I can put a new piece of plywood down that has some good support and won't be uh, flexing or breaking. Okay, so I've just finished uh, boxing in this uh, hole in the floor. Uh, as you can see, I used two by fours to basically line the edges um, and uh, this barrier here is for like my uh, forced air so I don't want to like cut this and put the board right across so I just put a second you know left a gap there not a big deal um, from here uh, then I put a cross beam here just for added support there's already the big floor beam or joist where you want to call it there and I boxed in the end there as well. So basically what this is doing is when I put the new piece of plywood in, it gives it a nice area to rest on so it has like maximum amount of support. I put this in here basically just to add some extra support. I did, it might look a little overkill boxing in this much, but in the end I'd rather do it a little, you know, go overkill on it and make it really strong and not have any issues whatsoever. I'd rather do that than say just put a couple pieces in and then have a soft spot on the floor, have the same issue kind of happen. So now's the time to kind of get this stuff done. So putting in a little extra 2x4s in there for extra support really isn't a, a bad thing. So uh, now all I gotta do is cut a new piece of plywood, lay it on top, and screw it in. Okay, so um, what I ended up doing was there's a tongue here for the tongue and groove for the uh, subfloor and I used the saw and just cut that tongue off of there so that it has a nice smooth edge. Um, this end is, a, is the groove so I don't have to worry about that. And uh, this is a 5 8 uh, subflooring and for doing some uh, kitchen work and repairs I have some like a nice finish like I think birch. Uh, it's a plywood with a nice birch uh, finish to it, right here. So it's a nice, 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 uh, 
a nicer piece of plywood than you really need to use for your subfloor, but I had this on hand, so I might as well use it because it costs basically nothing. And I cut it so that it basically fits perfectly, like so. Just like that. So this one spot will have a nice uh, piece of birch plywood on there, but no one will ever see it, so it doesn't matter as long as it's nice and sturdy and strong. Um, so now all I gotta do is screw in around the edge and uh, I'll also screw into where those like cross beams are and such and make sure it's nice and sturdy and that'll be it. Okay. So I just finished uh, screwing in the floor. Um, put quite a few screws in there but I don't want any squeaks or creaks or flex or anything like that. And it is solid. Not going anywhere, not going to make any noises or anything like that. Um, did a pretty good job. If you, uh, with the 2x4s, if the 2x4 isn't butted right up against the other pieces of the floor, um, then this section here will actually be lower and it'll have like a low spot. So this is actually pretty good. This side here has a little bit of a lip right there. So what I'll do is um, I'll probably try screwing this down just a couple more screws just to make sure that that's not popped up for some other reason. Um, I'm putting screws in all of the subflooring, so this is a nail. These are the screws I'm putting in. So for every, you know, every between all of, every nail, I'm putting a screw. Again, just because I don't want any squeaks or creaks or anything like that, and now's the time to do it. Um, so maybe some nails are popping up here, so I'll put a couple screws in, try to suck that down. And uh, otherwise, if if you have some high spots and everything, then you know you got to sand down the high spots or get in some uh, self-leveling. Uh, like the compound cement kind of stuff and put that on just to try to make it as, as close to level as possible. Uh, I'm a perfectionist so I like to try to make things as perfect as possible but uh, as long as it's as close to level as you know realistically possible then uh, you won't have any high spots or sagging uh, boards with your laminate and such. So yeah that's uh, kind of a quick how to patch your floor. Um, now this is with a new piece of plywood because that other plywood was cracked like I showed you. Over here, this plywood, uh, like the flooring, was actually perfect. It was just the joist underneath was uh, allowing the, the, the corner right here to, to sag down. So I was able to pop it up and then I uh, kept the tongue and groove on one end. And then on uh, the other end, I cut the groove off or the tongue off and that allowed me to lay the board back down. But uh, in, that, in, that, in this situation, I was able to reuse the wood I already had. So depending on what your situation is, um, you're able to kind of make it work for whatever you need. So hopefully that helped you, uh, gave you any, uh, or answered any questions you may have had while for doing this. And if you have any uh, questions or comments, leave them uh, down below.